just as a quick review, you find an image, you copy the image, and inside of your selected area, as long as it's on its own layer, you can go edit, paste special, paste into. And if the image does not fit, which is why I wanted to show this, you can make sure that you are not clicked on the channel or the layer side, you are clicked on the image side. There is no little linky button between these. See, now it's linked, now it's not. Now it's linked, now it's not. It needs to not have the linky. And then that is what will allow you to then select using the transform handles and stretch this. And I like the way that looks way better, okay? So trying to have some semblance of decent design in here. Ooh, ah. You can even rotate this if you felt like that was an important feature to your art. And that gives it more of a mountainy sort of texture. Great. Now this next piece that we're going to add here is taking something and pulling it out of an existing image. And I know that we talked briefly about using the select subject feature in the latest version of Photoshop. And we'll look at that again here. I'm going to just pause the movie and grab the image that I think you might want to try. Or an image, you'll grab an image, someone will grab a picture. I'm going to pause this. Okay, just as a quick reminder, I am in the Creative Commons search engine, the CC Creative Commons category, which is a great place to get royalty-free images and views and so on. And I want to use a flute in my background. We'll use a slight break flute, and there's a couple here. There's a yellow slight break flute, and it's kind of dull, and then there's a pink break flute here. So, and there's some cupcakes. They look pretty nice. And another grapefruit. So I'm going to pick one here. I'm going to pick this yellow grapefruit. Feel free to pick whatever you want. And this is nice because it'll give us the opportunity to look at color adjusting this. So right mouse click, copy the image. It's the whole image. And then you're going to go back to Photoshop. There should be nothing selected at this point. And what you see here is the transform handle showing, so I'm going to click away, so it's no longer showing. And then again, edit, paste. This is just a paste. Yes, it's giant. That's okay. Even though the grapefruit picture is kind of landing maybe a little bit outside of my boundary of my artwork, we'll deal with that later, and I'll show you some of the pros and cons of dealing with that. If it doesn't what fit, if I have too big, can we make it smaller with transforming? Absolutely. If your picture is too large, turn the transform handles back on. I might want to even just a little bit bring the transform in so that I, when I'm cutting pieces away, this is an important suggestion, that I don't have things or areas outside of the image area that will be floating out the round the edges that I can't see, mm -hmm. which can be like, why is there this little thing sticking to my picture? So get it all fitting inside there. And once it's fitting inside there, I will also now suggest that you turn off the transform handle controls. Now we did also talk a little bit about, I know I mentioned this, about this idea that Photoshop will try to select your artwork for you. There are some serious cons to that, which is to say that a lot of times, even though you would like Photoshop to select the artwork for you properly by choosing something like under the select menu subject, which is guessing what the subject is, it really doesn't know what the subject is. I zoomed in and it's doing a not very good job of selecting my grapefruit. I'm not excited about that, and I really don't want to play around for long periods of time trying to slide sliders to make it do its job that it should do when it comes with that tool that doesn't work very well all the time. So I'm not going to use that method. I'm going to deselect, and that's select, deselect. And then I'm going to do the old-fashioned way of selecting something. Here's the old-fashioned way of selecting something. First something that will help is to make sure that under view you have your rulers turned on. If you look at the edges of my work window here in Photoshop, there are rulers showing and I think you guys 
might need to turn this on. So we're going to go view and make sure the rulers is on. So show rulers under view, rulers are now on. When the rulers are on, here's a nice trick. You might want to watch this one. It's not going to be perfect, but it will be helpful. I'm going to grab the ruler from inside the ruler and drag down this guide and have it touch the edge of my grapefruit top. And then I'm going to take another guide from the left side and have it touch just at the grapefruit left side. I'm placing these guides here to help me use the ellipse tool to select the grapefruit quicker than just trying to do it with no selection tool. So rulers have guides in them and especially helpful when you're doing something round to know this trick or elliptical. Really, all I want to keep is the ellipse. I don't want everything else. So the guides, one at the very top edge of your grapefruit, and I have it just about touching, not exactly, and then one at the left side. This is the positions that you want to put your ruler guides. And I grab those inside the ruler and drag them out. One on the top and one on the left. All right, again, because this is elliptical, and I will say it's not perfect. There's like a flat side there and a little divot. Mm -hmm. But for our purposes today and learning these steps, it will be fine. So I'm going to use the elliptical marquee tool. And here's the crazy trick, okay? Because I marked with the guides from the rulers a top edge and a left edge, if I use the ellipse and I put it on this junction between the uh, at this crossroads here where these two marks hit each other, and I start clicking and dragging out. How insane is this? As I drag it out, it actually is almost perfect. <laughs> you have to kind of move your hand around to get it just right. And as I said, it's not really perfectly elliptical, but it's better than trying to do that with a lot of other tools that exist. Um, and I'm you gonna just say, cut off the edges of it. And, you know, well, exactly. I'm gonna. Great. Yeah, it's still way better. Like here, I'm gonna have to clean some of this, but I wanted to teach you how to do a layer mask. And so at this point, like, it's very close. And I'll click this little button here. It looks like a circle in a rectangle. This is the button you'll use. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. just pointing at it here mm -hmm. and there. So it doesn't cut it with a knife or a scissor. It uses the mask and says, look through this hole I made in this black sheet and only see this thing. And that is what a layer mask does. I'm going to undo it, okay, and deselect. And one more time here. I'm just going to take the elliptical tool. And right here, because I've placed these guides on the top and the left, if I come to this intersection with the ellipse tool and start dragging down to the right. I'm not trying to, like, perfect where does this should it go. I just start pulling down. And then I look at the bottom. I look at the left. And I say, that's uh, pretty close. Again, it's not going to be perfect. It's just going to be helpful. And then once it's in place, you're going to click on this little button. And this is going to create the layer mask. Boom. It's great for, you know, a class of young people. This is a really good start. So I'm going to go ahead and then turn off this recording and resume in the next one.